The all-new Mercury Mystique drives like no other car in its class. Because it's the only car in its class with all-speed traction control. And it's the only car in its class with a 24-valve Duratec V6 engine that goes 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. As for the rest, class dismissed. The all-new Mystique. It's a whole new Mercury. Hey, Mystique, your hardware's looking real good. These power belts are cool. It's copper cables and silverware. Ooh, I'm strapping on these tools, cause you'll be the first place. I'll always try, cause hardware now has a softer side. Come see the softer side. Business, the only thing you know for sure is that every day will bring the unexpected. Up one minute, down the next. Putting everything into running your business, but facing uncertainty with every decision, which is why AT&T is changing everything. With a guarantee that if your long distance service ever goes down, it'll be back in minutes. With the only never miss a call 800 guarantee. A guarantee that your international faxes will get there. And a guarantee to do it all at a competitive price. Only one company is bringing certainty to the uncertain world of business. AT&T. For the life of your business. The ABC Family Movie presents Disney's heartwarming adventure of a family of their four-legged friends. The network premiere of Homeward Bound, a movie the whole family will love. Saturday. Saturday on the Commish is Tony's new recruited good cop. How'd you like to help us nail Victor Kasabian? Are you kidding? There's nothing I want more. Or a bad cop. An all-new Commish, Saturday here on ABC. When Nancy Walsh looks in the mirror, she sees an unattractive, overweight teenager. But the truth is very different. Nancy has anorexia. I don't know how to stop it. Tracy Gold in the role only she could play for the love of Nancy, Sunday on ABC. Who knows your most closely guarded secrets, the intimate details about you that you usually share only with a spouse or a close friend or your doctor? Perhaps more people than you think, because as it turns out, some of the information you assume is strictly confidential. Your medical history, for instance, can be given out without your knowledge. How is this possible? Tonight, Dr. Timothy Johnson is going to show you how, and you will be shocked at how easy it is for strangers to invade your privacy. It was like a female David going up against Goliath. Two years ago, Nydia Velezquez led a scrappy grassroots campaign to represent the newly created 12th Congressional District in New York State. You want Nydia Velazquez for Congress, OK? Hi. The Dust to Dawn campaigning paid off. Nydia won the Democratic primary, beating five candidates, including nine-term Congressman Stephen Solars. We have won a very important battle. But just a month before the November election, Nydia had to face an even bigger challenge. Suddenly, screaming headlines revealed her deepest secret, that she had once tried to kill herself and was hospitalized for depression. It was all there in intimate detail, information stolen from the pages of her medical record and faxed to news media all over New York. I was in pain. I was outraged. And it still bothers me that I do not know how these people got access into my private, uh, private medical records. Nydia endured the humiliation, but won the election, becoming the first Puerto Rican woman ever to win a seat in Congress. However, her triumph was not enough to erase her bitterness about the loss of privacy. Did you assume that medical records were sacred? Nobody could get at them? They were protected like in a vault almost? Definitely. I, I was so confident. I was so confident that no one will be able to get a hold of these uh, uh, medical records. So how is it possible to get a hold of someone else's medical information? Well, we're going to show you several ways that make it easier than you may think. 
With the advent of computer technology, more and more medical information is being transferred from doctor and hospital files into centralized computer databases. This centralization of data does help to hold down costs, and it does make it easier for health professionals to treat patients. But it also makes it much easier for outsiders to tap into that very same data. To demonstrate just how easy it can be, 2020 hired Boston private detective Darren Donovan to try and dig up some medical facts about a Florida woman who had agreed to be our guinea pig. He started with only her name. Darren first outlined a radius around where she lived and worked. He then took a chance, hoping she would have gone to hospitals in those areas. With very little effort, he got the hospitals to call up their computer files. You just literally got on the telephone? Literally got on the Call the hospital, what, billing department? We asked for billing. You and know, said, patient I'm, accounts. I'm XYZ Insurance Company, and XYZ I need... XYZ Insurance Company. This is my name, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to verify uh, dates of admit. And as I said, um, it was very easy. Uh, some people didn't ask who we were at all. They'd punch in the subject's name and uh, give you a response. Within just a few weeks, Darren had learned something very private, that our volunteer had suffered two miscarriages. So given that you found this information fairly easily in straightforward fashion, were you surprised or shocked? Because of the type of information it was, I would think that would be more safeguards at, you know, at the hospitals and insurance cares. Darren only scratched the surface of our Florida volunteers record, but the data stored in a medical file goes beyond doctors' diagnoses and hospital laboratory tests. It can also include the drugs you take, your sexual orientation, genetic test results, and even risky hobbies like skydiving. In short, it can contain anything you have told your doctor or his office staff. But what you tell your doctor may not stay just between you and your doctor. It can also go to large companies which do nothing but compile and exchange your private medical information on behalf of insurance companies. Inside this unassuming brick building are millions and millions of facts culled from the medical records of at least 15 million Americans. Stored here at the Medical Information Bureau is coded information which includes anything from blood tests to certain psychiatric diagnoses. Based in Westwood, Massachusetts, MIB is the biggest database used by insurance companies. So how do they get that information? It's simple. When you apply for insurance, you authorize your insurer to collect your medical records and to pass on the information to MIB. Jeffrey Rothfeder is the author of the book Privacy for Sale. He says most people have no idea the MIB has medical information about them. What the insurance companies ask for is the entire record, which means if 10 years ago you went to uh, some kind of alcoholic rehab program, or you were in therapy, or the doctor wrote a note about something you said to him. You know, you were troubled about something. The doctor might say, might be depressed. All of that information will go to MIB. Insurance companies say they are simply trying to identify high-risk candidates. Neil Day is president of MIB. He says MIB files are closely guarded and are used only to help insurance companies access an applicant's risk factors. I believe that you will find that insurers are seeking relevant information and to the extent that they get information which is not relevant to an application for life disability or health they will hold it uh, in a very confidential manner but jeffrey rothfetter believes this huge database invades the privacy of health consumers mib has become somewhat of a sinister organization um, akin to the credit bureaus in the financial arena in the sense that they're very secretive about what they have and, and it's very difficult for individuals, for the, for the person himself, the subject, to get the, the, their own records out of there. Take the case of land developer Jim Gatton. He was denied health insurance because of mistaken information gathered when he went to see a new doctor. He asked a question, he said, do you drink alcohol? I, I replied that I do. And he said, uh, how, much, how much do you drink? And I said, oh, gee, uh, probably a couple six packs of beer every month or over the course of a month. And uh, he wrote that down. But somehow the information in Jim's file got distorted. He was now described as somebody who drank a couple of six packs a day, not a month. Jim was shocked to find that the error had traveled from his doctor's office onto the records of the Medical Information Bureau. So now he started battling for a correction in a file he never knew existed, held by an institution he had never even heard of. I was tremendously upset, and, and the, 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 the feeling was that Big Brother is here, and it's now, 
and we all better wake up or it's going to be too late. Jim undertook a dogged campaign to get a copy of his MIB file. After months of calling and writing, he did get it. Shockingly, it contained many other errors. It says, my siblings are in good health. It's interesting because I'm an only child. The file begins, though, with no active medical problems. I think I would consider somebody that really drank two six-packs a day as having a pretty severe medical problem. Jim says he had to battle to get his file corrected. But despite Jim's experience, the MIB's Neil Day insists that mistakes are quickly corrected and that the company's files are 97% accurate. And, he says, decisions to deny new insurance are never based solely on MIB information. You're saying that they would never make a decision based on an MIB report? It's not appropriate conduct, and there are penalties for insurers who, uh, who, who would do such a thing. They don't do it. But medical information does not just come from doctor's offices or hospitals or even insurance companies. Employers may also gain access to medical information. Ironically, access often technically granted by the employees. First, when you apply for a job, you may sign authorization forms for background checks that include checking your medical records. Second, if you ever file a medical claim, many people at the company may have access to your medical file. And finally, more and more employers are gaining medical information from employees who use in-house counseling programs known as EAPs, Employee Assistance Programs. Californian Gwen Husing had no idea that her employer, the city of San Jose, had gained access to intimate personal information. It all started last year when Gwen's department was involved in a controversial labor dispute. The city acknowledged that stress was affecting everyone, and they brought in counselors from its employee assistance program known as CONCERN. They tell you from the onset in the information they do hand out to you, which is printed, and at the actual session that you have, that it's all in confidence, and it's kept, the records are all confidential and to feel free to speak what you have to say and be honest and open and if you weren't they weren't able to really deal with your problem come on come on later when gwen's personal doctor ordered her to take a two-month leave gwen filed a workers compensation claim citing work-related stress but the city denied her claim saying gwen's stress was not work-related instead city officials said gwen was suffering from the hormonal changes of menopause and they backed up that theory with information from her medical claims and from what she had told Concern. It's like a priest in a confessional telling what you said to the media. It's exactly what it's like. I mean, you're guaranteed, you're told, it's confidential, and then to see that, it's such a violation. You just can't imagine. You just feel like totally violated. San Jose City lawyers declined to comment on the specifics of Gwen's case but maintain that they, quote, adhere to all rules of confidentiality. Bottom line is, there is no confidentiality. There isn't any. Not with medical records, not with employee assistance programs. There is no confidentiality. Experts agree the reality is that nothing is absolutely confidential. Jim Gatton urges others to take a simple step to protect themselves. You have a right, and I think maybe even a responsibility to yourself, to talk to your doc off the record. To say plain and simple, Doc, I don't want it written down. And my concern and the focus of this hearing is safeguarding the personal privacy of all Americans with regard to their medical care. In the meantime, some members of Congress are advocating a national law to protect the confidentiality of medical information. Congresswoman Nydia Velezquez is a strong supporter. When I found out that this information was being published in the newspaper, and that I have no power about stop it, I felt violated. I trusted the system, and it failed me. We must preserve an important historic principle underlying patient care, the preservation of confidentiality, the privacy and security of sensitive personal information. 